So after that day fishing with Buck, uh, he kept talking about that knowledge is the key to success. So I said, what knowledge? He gave me his green book and he said, this knowledge. So I wrote this five years ago. He said, there's even more to it, but this is the basic stuff you have to know in order to be successful, catching all species of fish, all different types of water, all seasons of the year. This is the bare minimum that you need to know. Well, because of that fantastic day of catching fish, he didn't have to ask me twice. I mean, I wanted the knowledge that he had. I was determined to become knowledgeable. And since he gave me the book, all I had to do was the easy stuff. All I had to do was read it. Now, I went to college. I think I mentioned it to you. I went to Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, and I never really liked school. I didn't like high school. I liked playing sports. I liked doing the things I liked to do, but I didn't really like school. I wasn't really a studious kind of person. I needed to be out doing something. It's just who I was. Uh, that's not necessarily the smartest way, but that's who I was. So when he said, if you want to be able to do what we just did, catch all those fish, you need to put in some study time. You need to study this book. Well, I have found out whether it's golf or fishing or, hunting or whatever your sport is, you love that sport so much, you don't think about it like you're going back to school. Even though you're educating yourself, you don't think about it that way. Like, I couldn't get enough of this. I just studied it. I read it. I studied. I outlined. I yellow markered it. I did all of those things. And then I go back and read it again. So after about two months, I called him on the phone one day and I said, but, and this is what I want to share with you. I said, Buck, I've read that book and I've reread it and I've read it again. I've read it again. I've underlined, I've yellow marked all the important, what I consider the most important stuff. But I want more. I need you to tell me more. And I think as a teacher, which he was a physics professor, I think as a teacher, he realized some people can, can learn best by reading. Some people can learn best by hearing. Some people can learn best by seeing. So he decided that he was going to make me some tapes. I swear to you, I looked everywhere. I tried to find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. But he had this wee little, most of you young people have no idea what it is. It's, it's smaller than your phone today. It's about half the size. But it was a little cassette player. And you could talk into it. And it would record on this wee little tape. It wasn't about, about that big. And it would record. And he started making me these tapes. I swear I wish I had them today. I'd like to be able to show them to you and maybe play some of it. But he started sending me these tapes. And he was speaking basically what's in here, but in maybe a little more detailed uh, way. But he was speaking it. And at times he would back it up with a certain story, uh, give me an example of whatever the situation was. So he made it somewhat entertaining for me as well as informative. He was teaching me through listening. So he'd send me this every couple of weeks, he'd send me a new little tape. And I'd put him in my little tape player and I'd lay around, listen to that. and. That's how I learned. I learned everything that he wanted me to know about this book. And I have no idea how many tapes he ended up sending me. Probably, I don't know, probably 40, 50 tapes. And as I look back on it, I was reminded just the other day when I was thinking about it, I wanted to share this with you. I was reminded that he had a chronological order of how these tapes should go, uh, just as he had a chronological order for how each and every one of the subjects or the chapters in his book would go. 
you can't teach somebody about mapping and interpretation the importance of interpreting structure if they don't know what structure is. If they don't know a what it is and why it is and where it is and how it is, uh, how can you teach them mapping? You can't. So something has to come first, then something comes second, then something comes third, and if it's all poured in, in this chronological, systematic teaching, chapter one through chapter end, you're going to learn. And that's what he did. He basically took me with audio and visual through the basics, the basic knowledge of catching fish, all species, all different types of water, regardless of the season of the year. That was how I got my education, folks. Studying, laying in bed at night, many nights to the wee hours till I fell asleep, listened to that silly tape, the newest little tape. And it hit me. Wait a minute. I don't want to try to teach everything Buck taught me. I want to teach to the fishing world. And I don't have to make a little tape deck. There's something now called YouTube. I can not only talk to you, you can see me, you can hear me, all of the above, and I don't have to pay 30 grand a week to do it. All I have to do start sharing. Now, with that knowledge of today's social media and what we can do, plus my education from Buck, I think I shared this with you once before, he told me after about, I don't know, it seems like it was, it was just a couple of years, a few years, of experiencing what he had taught me by going to different lakes, different reservoirs, and experiencing everything that I had read about or listened uh, to him about, then to actually go out and experience it with him. He finally said to me one day, he said, I think it was 1977-ish, something like that, 76. He said, you have now, I'm convinced, you have now what is the equivalent of a doctorate degree in catching fish. <laughs> I said, well, you can call me Dr. Nixon then. <laughs> he laughed. And we laughed, but he was serious. You have the chance. You have the chance to get your doctorate degree in catching fish. Now, it's not the same as finding a cure. Catching fish is not the same as finding a cure for cancer. I'm the first one to understand that. It's not nearly as important. But to a lot of people, their leisure time activity and their success in that activity and how it affects the rest of their life and their family and so on and so forth, it's all important. But if you really want to be good at catching fish, knowledge is the key. So I want to try to encourage you to do what I did back in the early days of my career, which was during those off months, even if it's just six weeks or eight weeks, you're not doing a lot of fishing. Let's use that time to acquire some knowledge. The knowledge that is needed to be successful. And there's plenty of time to go fishing. As soon as that ice goes off, I know you walleye, walleye guys will be out there looking for those shallow walleyes up the end of the reservoir or up at the head of that river. You're going to be looking for those walleyes as soon as the ice goes off. But between now and then, I want to encourage you to come along with me, do a little bit of study. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you, starting with page one, I'm going to give you the cliff notes of this book. I'm going to give you the cliff notes, basically, of Buck's advanced material, which came along years later. I'm going to try to give it to you in a, in a way that's at least somewhat entertaining. So that you're not like, oh my goodness, I don't think I want to go back to school again. Well, if you want to catch a bunch of fish and really change your fishing success, this is what I consider the basic knowledge you're going to need to have in order to accomplish that goal. 
But there's no way you can acquire that knowledge if you don't put in a little bit of study time. Now, if I put it on video, you'd be able to rewind it and, you know, re-listen to it and so on and so forth and, and end up hopefully getting the message. That's what I did. I played those little tapes over and over and over and over and over till it was ingrained in here. I knew the importance of watercolor because Buck told me 17 different ways the importance of watercolor. Let just give you an example. It's ingrained in here because I put in the study time. I put in the study time because I was convinced I needed to know everything that old man knew about catching fish. And I wasn't afraid to do a little work to acquire it. Fortunately for me, and I still we still haven't figured that out. He kind of took a liking to me, <laughs> gave me a lot of time. Not only did he make me my tapes and keep me going and get me to a point in my fishing where he said, I'd like you to go to work for me, which is what I ended up doing, ended up teaching his schools for 20 some years. But when I look back on it, it was a fishing education second to none. I literally do have my doctorate degree in catching fish, thanks to Buck Perry. What I'd like to do is give it all to you. And it's free. <laughs> Doesn't cost you anything. That's the best part of it. Back in the day when I'd make a videotape, you know, when I made a beta cam tape, you know, I charged like $39 for it, you know catching more and bigger walleye, something, whatever it was. But today, we can talk about anything and everything. Doesn't cost you a penny. But it is going to cost you a little serious time. you got to put in a little study to make the difference. I realized the importance of this when I started getting some emails. I'm talking to a lot of people and a lot of, a lot of the folks that are, you know, subscribing to my channel. Uh, they've been to my schools, have been to lectures, you know, they've been, you know, around it for years. But so many people, it's brand new. I can tell by the, by some of the questions. I thought, well, my goodness, I wasn't very clear about that, you know. Uh, so I realized that there's so many people that are basically beginners as to the knowledge of structure fishing that I want to take and start at letter A and move on to the end of the book. And bottom line, back when I started teaching, I think that my first schools were 72 or 73, 1973, that's a long time ago. But we didn't have YouTube. Uh, we didn't have cell phones today you can make movies on, you know. None of that stuff was around back in the day. And Buck didn't have, Buck had some money, but he wasn't spending it for advertising on television. And I certainly didn't have any money for that kind of thing. So the only way we could get our message across, teaching people the truth, the same truth that I learned that day on Orange Lake. In order to teach somebody, I had to have them in front of me. As I shared with you on a couple of weeks ago, the only way I could get people coming is take a sports rider fishing on their lake, catch a bunch of big fish, make a real stink, so that a whole big crowd of people would show up to hear the news. It was a tough way of working. And in those early days, for the first few years, I was averaging about 150, 175 lectures per year. And when you add to that, in order to make that lecture effective, I had to have people. And in order to get to people, I had to go fish their lake, and I had to take the writer, and all of the things that went along with it. It wasn't easy. And it also wasn't real effective. I could only reach so many people. If I had 200 people in every show times 150 shows, I mean, you know, that's not a lot of people for a year of work. But it was the only way I knew how to do it. So that's what I was doing. But today, it's so different. 
I can start and go through this material and I can teach everybody that never showed up to one of my lectures. I'd have one night lectures. It would last, I'd, I'd say abilities lasting an hour and I'd keep them there for two hours. <laughs> I never wanted to let people out of, you know, out of the room once I had a captive audience. And then I'd have a weekend class, uh, which would be uh, Saturday and a half a day Sunday after church. Uh, and then I'd have a seven day school. Then I had the seven day on the water school. So we had a variance of how we did our lectures and our seminars and our schools. But the whole idea was for me to be able to transfer the knowledge that I gained from Buck Perry and give it to the fishing world, to as many people as I could reach. Well, today, there's a chance of reaching thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people through YouTube. So I am starting over the next couple of months, I'm going to be doing some lectures. It's going to be like a lecture, but it's going to be relatively short. I'm going to do maybe three a week, something like that. But it's going to be relatively short so that you don't feel like you're back in that classroom and get bored with it. I don't want that to happen. So I'm breaking it up that way, but it's going to be very systematic. I'm really going to take you through the book. I'm going to take you through the nine volume course, but the cliff note version. And hopefully, along with some relatively interesting stories about Buck and my time with Buck. And the end result, what I'm looking for, is to have a group of educated structure fishermen with the equivalent of a doctorate degree, or at least a master's degree. And then through your experience over the next couple of years, Putting all of that knowledge to work, you will develop and earn your doctorate degree in catching fish. That's my plan. I know it's not perfect, but it's all I know how to do. I want to take what Buck gave me, and I want to give it to you. That's the bottom line. That's what I want to do. And the more people I can give it to, the happier I am. Now, whether or not you take all that knowledge and do something with it, and really become a great successful fisherman, which so many have already done. That's going to be up to you. But I will have done all I can do to make that possible. And that's going to be starting next week. We'll start our very first lecture. And it's going to be concerning the basic movements of fish. So thanks for being with me today. Thanks for listening to this idea, this plan of mine to try to give away to the world what Buck gave to me. And I hope you're going to be with me on this. And I know through the 4K and all of the great potential today, uh, with the high resolution stuff and the cameras and so on and so forth. Uh, this is something that can last for years and years and years and hopefully will help a bunch of people. As long as the Lord is willing and I'm kicking, I'm going to be teaching. If you buy into the fact that in regards to the sport, that you need some knowledge, you need to know how to get better. When it comes to fishing, you're going to ask, what knowledge? That's simple. He wrote the book. He changed all of modern day fishing with his discoveries. And he never just talked about something or spit something out of his mouth when he had an idea. He never wrote anything down or said anything until he proved it scientifically. He had theories but he never wrote them down or told anybody about them until he had proven it. Once he had proven it to his qualifications to satisfy him, then he wrote it down and called it a fact. Like most scientists, you know, they got theory, 
But until they prove something to be fact, they're not going to write it down. They're not going to say it's a fact until they've proven it. Well, he proved everything that's in this book, everything that's in this advanced material. He proved all over the country, all different types of water, all different seasons of the year, and all different species of fish. And once you have that information, you're going to be in a select little group of one half of one half of one percent of the fishermen in this country that know what the heck they're doing. No matter where you go or what you're fishing for, somebody wants you to go walleye fishing, you know exactly what to do, where to go, and how to do it. Somebody wants you to go fish the Great Lakes, and catch some smallmouth bass, you know exactly how to do it. You know exactly what you're going to need. You know where to go and how to find it and how to fish it. And all, you know, all of the above. You got all the answers because you put in the time, you put in your study, you put in your work. You know, I watched Clemson do the almost the impossible the other night. And they all talked about how they sort of earned it because they put in the work. That was a theme that went on in almost every interview I heard. They put in the work. Well, you want to be one of those unique fishermen that always catches fish. Regardless of species, time of year, or lake type you're fishing, you need to put in some work. Now, the good news is you have a professor that's going to help you through this schooling. <laughs> and... I was so fortunate that Buck not only taught me and taught me in sort of weird off the wall kind of ways, but also then took me out there on the water and had me to experience everything that's in these books. And it really was a great education. But through film and through YouTube today, we can do I can do the same thing with you that he did for me. It's just not in person, but it's close. So join me. For our upcoming series, which is going to start next week. Thanks for being with me today. And be sure to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done it. We appreciate you. And we'll see you the next time.